the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a Someday to my home far away, where is glory forever? I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies I love.
hands an endless mercy tree. your love that you would stretch your arms and go around the world and why for me would a savior's cry be heard i don't know why you went where i was meant to go i don't know why you love me so see those were my nails that was my crown that pierced your hands and your brow those were my thorns those were my scorns those were my tears that fell down and just as you said it would be you did it all for me after you counted the cost, you took my shame, my blame on my cross. How deep is your grace that you could see my need and choose to take my place? And then for me, words I'd hear you say, Father, no, forgive them for they know not what they do. I will go because I love them so. Those were my nails, that was my crown, that pierced your hands and your brow. Those were my thorns were my scorns, those were my tears that fell down, and just as you said it would be, you did it all for me, and after you counted the cost, you took my shame, my blame, those were my nails, that was my crown, that pierced your hand and your brow those were my thorns those were my scorns those were my tears that fell down and just as you said it would be you did it all for me and after you counted the cost you took my shame my blame on my Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The classes uh, that can depart at this time. And let us uh, just give praise to the Lord one more time from our the bottom of our hearts. Jesus, you're awesome in this place, oh Lord, my God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Appreciate these singing and presentations here this morning. 
Thank you, Lord. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, at this time of year, every year, I don't, I believe that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ all year round, but uh, it is focused, focused upon. But for there to be a resurrection, there must be a reason why that there is a resurrection. Jesus had to die in order for there to be a resurrection. And the, my subject today is the purpose of the cross. The reason why. And I want to talk about that. I'm not going to ask you to stand. But I'm, because I do have a lengthy reading of scriptures from four, uh, four books. Um, <clears throat> probably about 15 verses, I guess. 12, maybe. Isaiah 53 and verse 4 says this. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. All. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Philippians 2 and 8. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that should be holy and without blemish that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. I'm going to talk to you today. What was the purpose of the cross? What was, the, what, was, what was that all about? You can rejoice about the resurrection of Jesus Christ all you want, but unless you have know the purpose of the cross and you apply that to your life, then... Uh, I don't want to just go through another Easter church service. I don't like special occasions, actually, most times, because there's a whole of ceremony and all that and not a whole lot of meaning. And I don't know how God, what God thinks of it all, but I know one thing, that Jesus did die for sure on the cross, and he was buried, and he rose again, and we rejoice in that today. Praise God. Would you just help me praise him one more time? Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise you, O Lord, and magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The purpose of the cross, the lost to be found, because the debt of sin had to be paid from fallen man. The lost had to be found because God wanted a bride or he wanted people to live with him for eternity. The purpose of the cross is for salvation. All the Old Testament points forward to the cross. Do you know there was not one messianic prophecy that was not fulfilled? Not one. Every single prophecy was fulfilled. The purpose 
of the cross is for redemption. The purpose of the cross is for salvation. Hallelujah. Acts 20 and verse 28 says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The Lord did not own anything. Jesus said, I cannot, I don't have uh, any place to lay my head down at night. The only thing that Jesus purchased was with his own blood. And the Bible says, and we read it, feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. God purchased the church with his own blood. How did he purchase the church with his own blood if he's a spirit? Bible says God's a spirit. He, how did he do it? He used Jesus Christ. He robed himself in flesh. It was through Jesus Christ that God purchased the church with his own blood. Today is the day to get into the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what the best advice that I can give you right now is. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, get baptized today. Not tomorrow, but today. I don't know if you've got tomorrow yet. If you haven't been filled with God's Spirit, let God fill you today. That's right. Let it happen today. Say it's your, your priority is not your lunch, and your priority is not what you do the rest of the day. Yeah, your priority is... Get in the kingdom of God. Stay in the kingdom of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. In Matthew chapter 24 and in other places in the New Testament, the signs before that were, that were uh, given by the Lord, that would be the signs prior to the coming of the Lord. Now hear me now. These signs, I've examined them, and I come to this conclusion that were for the bride. We use them evangelistically many times, but they're for the bride. Jesus was saying, I want you to be ready. Because you see, the majority of people will not be. The Bible does say in the days of Noah, they didn't get it. Most of the whole world did not get it. They didn't get it. Well, you'd think you'd get it. No, they didn't. It says they were unaware. You can't ignore this because, no, you, you can't, because Jesus said it's going to be like this just prior to my coming. The majority of the world is not going to get it. Yeah, but the bride's going to get it. Yeah, that's why it's important for you to get in the kingdom of God because you're not going to get it. If you're not in the kingdom of God, you're not going to get it. Jesus said, except unless you're born again, unless you're born of water and the spirit, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. You're not going to see it. You won't get it. But when you're born of water and the spirit, you get it. Now I know. Why? Because there's something within you that's absolutely eternal and life-changing. So it's get in the kingdom of God and be ready. Better to have never been born than to miss the rapture of the church. Better for that person to have never been born. Live ready. Don't just be ready, but live ready. If you have to get ready, when opportunity comes your way, it will be too late then. You won't get ready. I assure you, you will not get ready. You do not have to give, get ready. You live ready. It's not some point you have to get ready. You live ready. Because if you aren't ready, you're not going to get it. 
because only those that look for him is Jesus going to appear to. I don't believe all these signs are for, are for those that do not know God. I don't believe all these signs are for people that have never heard of God. I believe these are signs for his bride. The Lord is saying, I don't want you to be ready because it's going to get really bad. I'll explain myself. The, em the enemy wants to contaminate your future. He tries to discourage you in your present so you won't go on in your future. You see, the devil tried to get Jesus to do this. Don't go on and finish. I'll read it. Luke 13, 31. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. Now think about this for a minute. Can you put that back for a minute? So thank you, bro. I got looking at this. Same day that came certain of the Pharisees. Do you really think they cared? No. They'd like Herod to get a hold of them and kill them. Pharisees came to Jesus saying, get out because Herod's going to kill them. As if they cared. They didn't care. Not at all. But I like what Jesus said. And he said, unto them, go ye and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected, or I'm going to rise again. Jesus was telling those Pharisees, I'm going to finish what I started out to do, and I'm glad that Jesus finished what he came to do. I'm talking about the purpose of the cross uh, and Jesus' last words uh, that he spoke uh, before he died uh, on the cross was, it is finished. Hallelujah. And I believe it would be like this. I don't have any Bible for it, but I believe if his, nails, if his hands weren't nailed to that cross, he would have went, it's finished. It's done. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the Lord finished, aren't you? The Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Wow, that's what he said. The purpose of the cross was to die for the lost, to purchase a bride for eternity. And the Lord gave signs because he wanted his bride to be ready. I can't emphasize that enough. He gave signs because he wanted his bride to be ready. Matthew 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Luke 21. Verse 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Forgive, O Lord, Forgive every person that's trying to fit God into their life. Forgive every, forgive Lord, every person that's so busy with their schedule, with what they're doing, that they're somehow trying to fit God into their life. Forgive God, please forgive. Because God, I know you want to be number one. I'm telling you, God wants to be number one. O oh Lord, Mark 13, 34, for as the Son of Man is a man, is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porters to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. 
And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. Yeah. James 5, 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Wow. My. I just feel like every time I step behind this pulpit that I'm preaching for the last time before Jesus comes. That's why I feel so urgent. I feel that because we're so close. It can happen just any time. I've got plans, and maybe you've got plans, but uh, not maybe, you do. But we're there. We're not looking a long ways off. We're here. And this is why the Lord died for us, to purchase us, that we'd be ready. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. There it is. Are you looking for the Lord to come? Because he's coming for you if you're looking for him to come. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Be patient. Get ready. Establish your hearts. Make sure you got everything under control. Make sure that the Lord is Lord of everything for that Jesus is coming. There will be a spiritual atmosphere that is prophesied in the last days. It's recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm not going to go there right now, but it says perilous times shall come because men shall be lovers of, and then it goes on and talks a whole list of, there isn't one category in there that's not happening right now. Not one, not one, not a one. The atmosphere of the last days is upon us. We're at this place right now. And I'll tell you what is the main tactic of the enemy to try to derail you from finding God, and that is confusion. It's confusion. Confusion. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 13, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches of the saints. God wants to put peace in your heart, not confusion in you. God's not the author of confusion. And when you find yourself being overcome by confusion, get in the presence of the Lord because confusion will be eliminated from your life when that happens. The devil's trying to scramble the signals. Yeah, trying to mess up the plan of God that God has for you. To mess up God's creation. Uh, you need to hear the voice of the Lord today that's speaking. Uh, God is saying to you, I'm not confused. Follow me. I'm not confused. I know what's happening. Uh, I know where you're supposed to be going. Uh, I'm not confused. You follow me. In a world of confusion, God's not confused. God's not confused. Follow him. Yeah, put your life totally in his hands. Proverbs 14, 12 says this. <clears throat> There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, that's really far off. <laughs> what would you think of a person that uh, they're walking along, and let's make believe, you know, that this is a cliff. I wouldn't be standing that close, but it's a thousand feet down there. You say, well, it looks like the way to go. You say, he's crazy. 
you know what? That's just the way it is. And if we think we know where we're going in our life, we think that we just know how to work it all out. No, it's not going to last. It's going to end in a real bad way. There's a way that seems right to a person, but that's not the way to go because only God knows the way. That's the right way. We just cannot accommodate all the lifestyles and perversions of this atmosphere today. No. I know a lot of people's attitude is, well, if they're not hurting anybody, let them do whatever they want. Well, whoopee ding dong. Don't say anything against them. That's their lifestyle. That's their what they want to do. Don't don't say anything against that. No, we can't we can't accommodate all of that. We must hold fast to what is right. We must hold fast to what is truth. We must hold fast to what is the right way. Hallelujah. I still believe in absolutes. I still believe some things are absolutely right and some things are absolutely wrong. Hallelujah. There's a glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a glorious kingdom of God, and it's still the way to go. There is no other way to go for your life but that way. And I'm going to say it till Jesus comes, uh, or I no longer breathe the breath of life, uh, whatever happens, uh, I'm still going to say it. Uh, there's no other way to go but, into, but get in the kingdom of God. Uh, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the way to go. So are you going to be overcome by this age or are you going to be an overcomer? That's the question. Are you going to succumb to the symphonies of Satan or are you, have you made up your mind, uh, I'm going God's way, I don't care what happens? Because there's many people, let me, let me rephrase that, the majority of people will be overcome by this age. Will be overcome by this age. You can't just patty cake for Jesus. And you can't just be a religious person. You got to get something in your gizzard that's real. You got to get something within you that's right. Uh, you got to need the power of the Spirit of God just permeating your whole being. You need the power of the Lord to operate in your life. Uh, you're going to say, Well, I'm a good person. Well, there's lots of good people, as we would classify good in the world, uh, but it takes more than that. Uh, it takes God to be. Lord of our life, uh, to fill our very being. Uh, God can't be just part of your life. Uh, he can't be just part of your existence uh, on this earth. Uh, he must be Lord of all and be number one uh, in your life. Uh, as I've said before, God forgive us for trying to fit you into a, a busy life. That's wrong. That's wrong. And the devil would like it that way. Because Jesus said, you better watch out. Not just drunkenness and surfeiting, but the cares of this life even. And so that day come up, comes upon you unawares. Oh God, you must not adapt to the atmosphere. My good brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you must not adapt to this atmosphere, hold on, hang on, be an overcomer, break through, persevere, uh, don't let go of what God has for you, uh, reject all the lies of the devil that would try to destroy your life, uh, and give yourself totally to Jesus Christ. Because iniquity shall abound, Jesus said in Matthew 24, the love of many shall wax cold. So what was he saying? Well, because of the atmosphere, the love of many will grow cold because of the atmosphere. Wow. No, it's not a godly atmosphere. It's not conducive to, a godly, to, to godliness and holiness and righteousness in our generation. No. Jesus went on to say, but he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. There's some things you're going to have to endure. 
There's some things that you're going to have to, you're going to, have to persevere. Sometimes uh, when things aren't going real, real good for you, but uh, you got to keep on keeping on. Uh, Hallelujah, because God uh, is with you. Luke 21, 36 says this, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Revelation 16, the Lord said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So you see by that scripture that, that says uh, that, that uh, the Lord will come as a thief. Uh, that day will come as a thief. The thief doesn't announce, hey, I'm coming right now. Open the door. I'm coming to steal everything in your house. No, not at all. Those that are not prepared will be left behind. Jesus said, in Mark 13, 37, he said this. What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Wow. That was the purpose of the cross. To seek and to save, to purchase a bride with his blood. We need to be more diligent, not less. After all, this is a day of deception. It's a day of perversion. It's a day of confusion. We need to be more diligent, not less. There needs to be more attention to the spiritual, not less. It's okay to wear masks. We've heard that because it's safe. You know, it's okay to keep away from people. It's been okay. Keep away from people and social distance and all that kind of stuff, proper distancing. It's okay to shut down indoor dying and it's dining, not dying, but dining. It's okay. For the waitresses, it's been like dying, trying to keep from getting broke. It's okay to shut down gyms. It's okay to close borders of countries. It's okay to bankrupt thousands of small businesses in our country. It's okay to inject into the body substance that was not proven at first, if it was safe or not. It's okay because it's all in the name of health. It's all in the name of health. And my question is this. Is your soul worth less? I look how readily, wow, 2020, we were shut down in here for seven months, 12 months. Go figure. And I don't know how many months in 2021, but it was all because of a pandemic. And I'm not saying that wasn't real. It was, but it was, in, it was because of health. It was health. And there's so many people that are living in total fear no matter what happens or what regulation or whatever. Total fear. And I have to recognize that. I've got to recognize that. And because fear is bondage. But my question, another question is, is your spiritual condition as important as your health? I look at all that's been done in the name of health. Yeah. It's been done in the name of health. And I'm not saying it's bad to look after your health. But I am saying this. Your spiritual condition is more important than even your health. Your spiritual condition is absolutely more important. If you have to get ready, in the end, if you have to get ready in the end, when opportunity comes your way, it won't happen. I assure you, it will not happen. Because Jesus is coming for those that look for him, and most people aren't going to get it. That's why it's important to be ready 
at all times because the purpose of the cross was to purchase a bride and Jesus is coming for his bride. And the question is this, are you ready? Are you ready right now? Are you ready? Because the Lord is coming. In the midst of all this confusion, in the midst of the atmosphere of today, Jesus is coming for a church. You think the Lord's not coming for what he already bought? He says, it's mine and I'm coming. Oh, Lord, I want to be in his church. I'm thankful for all the fellowship. You know, there's all kinds of stuff, and you folks know what I'm talking about. And I dearly love to eat. I get accused of talking about food while I preach all the time. I love the fellowship. I do. I like to... I like people, just, uh, you know. Are you likable people? Or? Is Sister Shannon approachable? I like... I like all of that. I like to have a good time. And I think it's good to look after yourself and don't get overtired and get to sleep and all that kind of stuff. But there's nothing any more important than your spiritual conditions. It's more important than your health. It's more important, important than where you go. It's more important than what you do. It's more important than all the good fellowship and all that. But the purpose of the cross of Jesus Christ was to save the lost, and purchase himself a bride. Praise God. I'm glad that he did, aren't you? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you stand with me and would you just give yourself to the Lord right now? God, I want to give my praise. Is there some praise within you that you just cry out to the Lord, Jesus? I desire you right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you Are you ready? Yeah. You know, God could be dealing with you. If you wait just a little while, it'll stop being uncomfortable. And you can get on and do something else. But uh, that's going to go. But that might be to your detriment. Yeah, it might. I'm asking you, are you ready? Are you living ready? Are you ready? Because I'm living in that time that I feel such an urgency. I've been preaching for a long time. I don't mean this morning. I'm not been preaching that long. But for a long time, it's for a few years. But the Lord is real today. His power is real. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to ask everybody that would spend some time and examine your heart before the Lord. I don't want to single you out because I could. I just to say, everybody, that if you're not ready, I want you to come to this altar. Whether you are or whether you're not, I'm going to invite you to come. I want you to invite you to make yourself ready if you're not. Get ready. Say, Jesus, my life, my walk with you is most important. It's most important. I know there's a lot of, please bear with me just a minute. I know there's a lot of you that your inner intentions is not to be lost. Your inner intentions is not to be lost. It's not you're, you're intentionally rejecting God. 
It's just that you're so wrapped up with other things that God is crowded right out of your life and you find yourself struggling to make God just a little part of your life. He wants to be Lord of all in your life. He wants to direct your steps. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Jesus. Next few minutes, let's pray. Jesus, I need to be ready, Lord. Jesus, help my Lord. If you're not ready, make yourself ready. I need you, Lord Jesus, right now. I need you, oh Lord, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need you, oh Lord, my God. I need you, oh Lord, my God. I seek after you, Lord. That's it. Uh, we're going to cry out to the Lord. Uh, that's it. Just cry out to God right now, wherever you are, right this moment. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I need you, oh God. Uh, help Jesus. Uh, help Jesus. Help Jesus. Help Jesus right now. Uh, I need you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need you, oh God. I need you, oh God, right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I need you so much, oh Lord, right now. Hallelujah. I need you so desperately. 